Hey everybody, this is Matt. We're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today is Wednesday, March 25th. Is yes. that right? Correct. I'm like, I have no idea what day it is or what. I'm, I'm all goofed up with the whole, um, you know, because of the whole whole quarantine thing. So everybody, it is, I don't know what time it is, right around 5 o'clock. And um, today we're going to do a video on some of the router bits that we use. We've got a, actually, we're going to do a video on a lot of router bits that we have that we use in our handheld routers, our um, table router, and of course, our beloved pin router. And we even have an honorable mention that we use in the drill press. It's not really a router bit. You'll see at the end. So, Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good. Yeah? Uh -huh. How do you like these uh, these deep dive tool videos? Oh, they're good. They're fun. The, remember that video I did where I, we talked about this, where I talked about, like, I'm going to do the 50 tools you need to start building guitar. Oh, I don't watch any of your videos. Yeah, I know, I know. But we remember we talked about the idea of that. Yeah. And it was a I year do. or more ago. Uh -huh. I did the and I thought that was going to be something you did, like, all the time. Yeah. And then it just sort of, yeah. This seems like a better way to do it because people can ask questions and, and you know. Yeah. And yeah. we can steer the, the conversation. Plus to say, 50 tools you got to have. It's like, well, okay. I, that was the problem. Yeah. The, yeah. the first 10 was really easy, it yeah. seemed like, for you. Um, and then and then you're like, well, I don't really know what the next ones should be. Mm -hmm. I kind of know what the top 10 are going to be, but I'm having a hard time filling in this yeah. the second set of 10. And, I'll get and when you get down to the last 10, it's like, oh, geez, what about this? No. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, and it, was, and, it, and it was tools you should have in your shop, yeah. not necessarily tools we have, or, you know, even just, yeah. It was intro to guitar building tools? Kind or of, was it, yeah. I don't know what it was. Professional guitar building tools. I'm not sure. So now we're just showing everybody the, the Well, now we're going to deep dive into router bits. Professional tools. We're doing a whole segment on routers this week. Okay. Um, so when you when you start building guitars, um, and guys, remember we're live. So if you have any questions, you know, you go ahead and, and shoot them in the, the yep. section there, and we'll we'll try to get them answered as best we can. So uh, the first bits I think that you buy when you start making guitars is you get a flush trim bit. Now, guys. All of these bits are used and and look like hell. And some of them are only used for one thing, and that one appears to be used for pick guards of some <laughs> because it's covered in plastic. Yeah. So this is this is the the probably one of the first kind of bits you will get. This is a flush trim bit, and what happens is it's got a bearing here that rides on um, a template, and then it has a cutting bit that cuts the piece. Now what you want to do is, you want to go ahead and, and trace around the template and cut it close. You don't want to just start hogging away at that, you know, a sheet of three-quarter plywood or MDF and let this bit do all the work. But I've seen people try it. So this is a good bit to start with. This is a flush trim bit. Now they make the opposite of this. I'm going to show you. This I'm going to show you a, a bigger version. This has the bearing on the opposite side. I'm going to get closer to the camera. This has the bearing on the bottom and the cutter on the top, or the bearing on the top and the cutter on the bottom, depending on how you orient it. So this is the same kind of deal. It's got a bearing that rides on a template uh, and, a, and a blade that cuts the, uh, the piece. Okay? So these are two, two style of bits that you should absolutely have if you're going to work with templates. The downside to this and this is that sometimes, like, like, look, that's a big, big cut. If you're, so, if your piece is like this and your template is where the bearing is and you're taking an inch and a quarter cut, that's a big, big cut. Um, I, don't, I don't advise that. So, Chris, why don't you show us, talk about this, this guy here, because that's a cool one, and then talk about this one as well. This is my favorite little wee bit. Okay. I got this. I need a little tiny bit. So it's the same and it's, flush trim bit, Yeah, right? flush trim bit. I think this is, yeah. Well, I guess I've used it for everything, apparently. Also cutting through tape. <laughs> oh, lots of tape. goo. So uh, what, what is the, what's the claim to fame on that? People are just going to have to 
realize that are some of our routed attempts? Um, it's well, it's just small, so it goes around uh, small, small corners. So it's like a, a J base. Yeah, like a J base pickup yeah. or the, the little ears. Yeah. On a J base or a Jazzmaster pickup. I think that's specifically uh, that's why I ended up with this one was so I could make um, yeah Jazzmaster pick guards, and I actually like using it for pick guards in general because it. It's small and it fits through, and you know. Okay. You get used to a tool, and then all of a sudden, that's the only tool you want to yeah. use. Yeah. So now tell everybody about this guy here. So this is a door hinge um, router bit, and it's got it's a really small uh, cutter on it. It's, it doesn't go very deep at any given time, but it's nice because you can put in um, if you use it in a. So you've got a template on the top of the guitar, like yeah. a, a quarter inch MDF template, mm -hmm. and you're going into something, and you're like, oh, I just need to go in a little bit to get it started. You don't want to use this guy. Right. So yeah. Yeah, so um, we use this one for putting in... Uh, Show everybody on the, the screen. There you go. That's it. <laughs> for putting in uh, control cavity covers and things like that. Yeah. It works really well for stuff like that, or stuff that doesn't have to go very deep. Or if oh, you're already... Right. If you're already in, this works. This is a great one for in deepening neck pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. If, you're, like if your neck pocket needs to be just a tick deeper, that's a great one to use. Yeah, because seemingly they make bits that size. And, they <laughs> and, then, and then an inch and a quarter. Yeah, uh-huh. That yeah. seems about right. Yeah. So, and then there's this guy here. We get a lot of questions about these bits. This is a spiral, I don't know if this is a spiral up cut or spiral down cut bit. We use these, we have one of these in our router for our router table at all times. And it just, it, it makes a cleaner cut and um, it certainly, it's, it, you know, comes off the router almost ready to go, no sanding required. And it, it greatly reduces tear out. Now remember, it's still only a half inch, uh, diameter cutter so you're not completely eliminating tear out but do you, here, here's a here's a quick factoid about these you know why these are so expensive Chris we got a complaint that the volume's low you know why it's low because the microphone's backwards oh crap I forgot to flip it around okay. thank you dirty knobs for pointing that out thanks man sorry that we're okay this is probably good now yeah hopefully let me know if it's better okay so I want you to Sorry. look at, at two bits here. Here's this guy right here, which I think was probably like, I, let's say $30. And then there's this bit here, which was 99. Why do you suppose this bit here is more than this bit here? Uh, I would expect because making the spiral sharp is more difficult than making two, two knife Kind of. Sharper nerf. So this is a steel bit with a carbide edge. Okay. And you can't spiral cut, or you can't attach carbide in a spiral. Okay. So this bit is made entirely of carbide. Wow. So that's why this is a little more expensive than this guy. Oh. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I just I just realized that I did know that, and I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I'm Chris gonna knows. dazzle everybody with my knowledge. I'm gonna see if Chris knows. That's why they call it a carbide spiral bit. Yeah. Um, here's another bit that is kind of fun. When I was making a lot of Les Paul tops, I used this bit um, to do the tops and kind of step things down. You don't need to, but it was kind of fun because it's a little bit rounded, but also it's got the um, bearings on the side. So okay. All right, so what do you want to talk about now? Let's, you want to get started on your, your deep dive course into roundover bits? Sure. What do you suppose the most popular roundover bit is? Because um, we get asked this question a lot. I, I hey, don't know. You, you know. And you know the question that we get. What roundover bit do you use for a Strat, for a Tele, for a Les Paul, for a, you know, yeah. So what, what is the, what's the, what's the word? What's the word on the street? What's, what? One do I think is the most popular? No, no. Tell us what what each one does. Oh, okay. <laughs> or the most popular, whatever. You want. <laughs> so that's a half inch roundover bit. That's what we use on the big roundover Fender stuff, like Strats and. So like, Jazz Masters. Jazz and, Masters and Jazz, and jazz bases Jags and, and Jazz Bases and yeah. and all of that stuff. Now I hear, and I can't imagine that it's true. And this is what I wanted you to that, get to. That yeah. <laughs> that uh. 
Fender used, rather than a half inch, which, which would be 8 sixteenths, mm -hmm. they used a 7 sixteenths roundover. Uh-huh. And I don't think that's true. Why do you think people think that? Uh, because the bodies then got sanded. They, have you ever seen a 7 16 no, roundover? No, not that bit? I know of. I mean, I haven't really looked a whole lot because the first the first time I used a half inch one, it looked right to me. So yeah, I rolled with yeah. it. But yeah, I think what happens is bodies get sanded and mm -hmm. get over sanded. And well, then, yeah, yeah. And then people start nerding out about oh, half inch is way too much. Mm -hmm. Which means that it's a thirty second too much on either side. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, so we also have so we have a half, and then this is like three eighths. I don't know what we use three eighths for. It probably doesn't get used very much, actually. Not on guitars. Here's a quarter. Quarter also doesn't get used very much, um, but sometimes if you want a little bit of a round over, it's better than a poke in the eye. Uh huh. And then there's these two guys here. What? 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 Are, show everyone what what what's up with those those dudes. So what's this one? I think that's eighth, and the other one's three sixteenths or something. I don't I don't know. So that's an eighth inch round over, and we'll use that on things that need that round over. Yeah, I think I think that might be like what we use for anything that's Gibson style. Yeah. Because if you go to this shorter one, sometimes it's like putting nothing on the, the edge. It's like yeah. you're doing absolutely jack shit. Sometimes if I'm using this one, but I if, if I want something in the middle, yeah. I'll just kind of not make this take its whole cut. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, you just you know, make it not. Okay. Yeah, it just helps to break the edge off. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this little guy here, whichever, whatever it is, three sixteenths or or whatever it is, it's actually in a in a router collet. Um, but yeah, this I think this is probably what. You know what I do when I anymore? I just take a piece of like one fifty and run it around the edge of the guitar to get. Yeah, this, that's about the, what yeah. that is, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. So let's talk about some other roundover bits. We've got... Um, all right, so this is a three-quarter round, and this is, uh, I think, a seven-eighths roundover. And these are great for beginning the profile on Fender-style necks. And you put these in the router table, and you buzz... Imagine if you're taking all of that off of the sides of a neck, it becomes very, very easy to continue to shape that either on a, you know, by hand with hand tools or on the deadhead sander. So these are great tools for that. Now, you know what someone's going to say? Have you ever seen that tool from what's its face? That they... Tom, Tom just said that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what they're talking about is this guy here, which is a tool. It's made by, who is it? JSE? JSE, I think. And right. this is at Australia. Yeah, where this every is, animal is dangerous, so right, every tool, tool can be too. Crikey! Yeah, so this <laughs> this guy is like a, a Gibson D shape, I think. What do you think about this, Chris? We've used this a couple times. So when we first, when I first heard about it, I thought, oh, that looks really cool. Yeah. And it sounds like we should be able to use it pretty easily. And when we got it. I found that, to my mind, it's not designed quite right, yeah. and it yeah. the, the the bearing is too high from the cutting surface, and you run out of bearing on top of the neck mm -hmm. if you're especially if you're doing like a a Fender style neck, which is really only yeah. you know one inch at its thickest. The bearing's over an inch high from there, so yeah. If you start to look at, I don't actually like it. Yeah, I I say thumbs down <laughs> on this. With apologies to yeah. JSE, but yeah, we could, I... We could figure out how to make it work if we jigged up to do it, but... It's funny how not different it is from the three-quarter inch bit. Yeah. It's just, it's got this thing here, which, like, when you get to the headstock end, you have to stop prematurely because this is going to dig into the, the volute area mm -hmm. or dig into the heel. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I don't know. This really seems like... You know what this is? This is a chair rail bit. Or, or a, a, I'm sorry, not a chair rail, but a... A, a baluster. A, a banister. Banister, yeah, there a we go. banister bit that the guy goes, hey, that's pretty close. 
Although he's from Australia, so he was really more like this. Right then, that's pretty close to a Gibson, isn't it? Or maybe that I don't know where he's maybe, from. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know what it sounds like. Yeah. And I think this got pressed. I don't know, but don't he's know got either. all sorts yeah. of this. But chucking that up into the table router and going for it. And putting this this way in the um, the pin router is absolutely even worse. It's some way it's even spookier. Well, you gotta yeah. If you well, if you do that, then you gotta have, all of a sudden you're it just doesn't fit the order in which we build necks in. Yeah. Because you have to have the. You see why the, we'd have to do the radius after. Get a load of that. this. This, for you know why these are colors, so you can see them when they're spinning. <laughs> That's really it. That's why they're coming like yellow and green and shit like that. So yeah, I, guys, if you have one of these and you love it, cool. Um, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan, and maybe I just don't know how to work it. He makes one that does the radius on a fretboard. Can you imagine using that? There's a video of somebody using it, and it looks scary on the video, and I think the guy even says it's scary. Yeah. But, you know, cool. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't have any desire to get one of those. You want to know what the spookiest router bit I've ever used is? Yes. It's this Ninja Star one. And I, uh, back in the old days, I would use this to put in the um, truss rod cavity in, um, in my necks. This is, a, this is a quarter inch cut, and um, it's, it's not tightened up. This is actually on a shaper bit, and the idea is, the idea was it would go into my router table and spin like that, and I would move the piece through it. And I actually had a, a curved uh, um, slot that it would that this this would follow, and it worked okay, but it was really spooky. It was spooktastic. So this one was this is sort of a homemade thing. I do not advise that you do this, but <laughs> I think I think I saw the guys at Hamer had a shaper that had this in it, which in the shaper wouldn't be any less, you know, uh, 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 remarkable in its ability to hack at you, but anyway, yeah, so this, this actually worked, but it was spooky. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about more about some, oh, sh talk about these guys here, Chris, and, and this guy too. I'm gonna let you, I've been doing all the talking. You can, you can do all the talking no, because no I'm one wants terrible to hear at me. this stuff. You are, you rock at it. So that's a 45. What's that for? Uh, it's for when you want to put a 45 on something, Matt. Um, so wah, normally we wah, use, wah. I usually, this, I use this to be put bevels on uh, pick guards a lot. Yeah. Um, that's the number one use for us. We, we've also Have, chucked it up, and Monkey did a uh, SG. I think the Prince guitar. Yeah. Got that probably. Yeah, I think that was the reason that you bought this yep. one was because it had the big as the a big half inch shank, shank yeah. and because we have a smaller one too with yeah. a. With a, a quarter inch or eighth inch, whatever it is. What if you want to spend a lot of money on a router bit and have it not work? <laughs> Here's your bit. <laughs> this is a, I don't even know, like 33 degree or something like that. Okay. And I was online and people were talking about how vintage uh, fenders had a, uh, a shallower bevel than the 45 and... and did they Somebody recommend was, that one? Yeah, I think. I, I think. Okay. So I started looking one day, and I, and I found one, because um, it's usually a really hard bit to find. Yeah. But this guy was breaking up. He was buying big packs of router bits okay. and breaking them up and selling each each piece individually. Mm. And so I bought this, and I made one pick guard with it, and it looked really, really dumb. Yeah, that guy was and full of shit. Huh? Yeah, so. You know, sometimes we'll put a regular round over on a, on a pick guard. That's one of my favorite new things to do is use that little tiny one and just break the Th edge who with didn't, it. Doesn't Brian sometimes do that too? I think so, yeah. 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 Uh huh. And it looks good uh, with three ply and it looks good with single ply. It looks really good with single ply. Yeah. You know, if you need to, because single ply, I don't necessarily like a 45 on single ply pick guard. It kind of looks weird sometimes. Yeah. And, but, a little just breaking that edge a little bit makes it feel nice and it looks really cool. What so, about the, what about that that oh, guy there? What do you call this? A cove, cove bit? Cove, yeah. Yeah, so this is a cove bit and it's similar to this kind of cove bit or that kind of cove bit, but it's got a bearing on it. 
And we use this when we do German carve Moserite bodies, mm -hmm. and it, it just starts that that cove around the body. Scoops it out. And then you can leave it, or you can German carve the rest of it. We have seen some guys who are making Moserite style guitars that just put that in. And they call it a, they, they say, oh, it's got the German carve. It no, not. it's got a it's, cove. It's got a cove in it, in yeah. It. It's got a half so, inch cove. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the easiest part of a German carve mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah. All right. Let's talk a little bit about some. Oh, we got one more thing that I want to talk about that you can use in lots of stuff. This is the Stumac um, binding cutter, and it is it cuts a rabbit. So unlike the previous cutters that the bearing is flush with the blade, this you you can swap the bearing out and make the um, the cut. Fit. It, right now it's 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 got um, uh, the bearing is designed such that it works with sixty thousandths binding, um, and we've got a bearing that works with ninety thousandths and and a bunch of other stuff. So this works well for binding, purfling, um, burfling, pinding. It works with all that stuff. Those aren't things, um, and I use this. I use this in the table router. I use it in the pin router. I use it in a hand router. I even have a little jig that um, uh, kind of rides. Well, I'll, maybe that's the deep dive video for another day. The, yeah. The, the, how yeah. how to put a round uh, put a binding route in a guitar. Sure. Okay. So some other ones that I want to tell you about that we use specifically in the beloved pin router. This is a half inch um, straight wall carbide cutter, and um, this is good for, you know, outline of the guitar or pickup routes, neck routes, that sort, that sort of thing. We also have it in a spiral style. I'm, again, I'm not sure if this is up cut or down cut. I don't think it really matters, but anyway. Um, th yeah, so you can see here, this is. And the reason we have half inch ones, we have half inch pins. We also have three eighths and quarter. Um, sometimes if you want to hog off a lot of material, this is a three quarter inch cutter. So like when we, uh, put headstocks in, uh, in the, the headstock angle jig, we don't want to take a half inch at a time. So taking three quarters of an inch, this is a, this is the big hoss right here. And sometimes I'm like, Hey Chris, I need the Hondo bit. I've I'm never saying, actually said that. What the that. hell are you talking about? <laughs> The Hondo? <laughs> How you doing there, Stretch? Ready? The big Hondo. I, I, was, I was watching uh, the Men in Black movie where Josh uh, oh, Brolin the new one? was. Yeah, yeah, was. And he, <laughs> and he called it. He was, everybody was Hoss or Hondo or Stretch or Sport or Did something. Did he actually call somebody Hondo? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. So we've got the, um, um, so we got the big Hoss right here. And then sometimes we have a look at this little... A little bitty one, and we even have littler bitty ones than this for inlay. But this is a uh, this is an eighth inch router bit that we sometimes use in Dremel tool. It's got an eighth inch shaft, um, or sometimes we use it in the uh, in the beloved pin router. Anybody got any questions about router bits? Um, yeah, somebody asked about the uh, the the bit on the shaper. What is it? Oh, the helical cutter on the shaper. That is a shaper blade that we got from Shelix, and um, it's a three inch. I think you can get different diameters. Ours is three, and it has 26 or however many carbide inserts that mm -hmm. you removable things. That thing's a monster. That's the biggest shaper bit we have, obviously. I mean, that doesn't, it doesn't the, in terms of cutting tools, I think that's basically like taking a planer and removing all the stuff and just having it exposed and sticking out there. That's stick it out on a flat table. Yeah, you know, sideways. That's basically what it is. So, what's your favorite one, Chris? You my, got a favorite? My favorite bit. Yeah. Uh, probably any of these. Anything that works in the beloved pin router. Yeah, that's probably gets the most action. Yeah, and really, I mean, yeah, half inch is yeah, come the, 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 the way to go. Mm -hmm. we, what we should do is we should figure out a way to get a bigger pin, and then we could get some, some really burly, nasty 
stuff and really jack some wood. You know, up. we we could, but the uh, the the jet pin router manual says to not use anything bigger than a half inch. Yeah, and really for it's, for pattern work. This yeah. is probably okay if you're just taking a little bit off the top, but mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we get a one inch pin and a one inch bit and really hog some shit. So there's one more that honorable mention, and that is not really designed to go on a router. It's designed to go on, if you can believe it, a drill press. And that is the Wagner Safety Planer. Have you ever used the Wagner Safety Planer, Chris? No, these things scare me to death. <laughs> so they're, they're funky. And they've been around for forever. I don't, um, I don't know. Tulsa, Oklahoma. I wonder if that's where they're still made. I think Stu Mac actually bought the rights to this, and um, oh yeah, yeah, okay. and and they they make it now, or maybe they have it made. So what it is, see each one of those little three things there is a cutter, and you put this in your drill press and basically shove wood under it, and and so your the bottom of the board goes on the bottom of the drill press table, and then this hacks a bunch of it off, and man alive, it's. It's uh it's a it's a spooky day when when that gets sideways on you cuz yeah it, it's I, I don't know what's safe about this. That's the funniest part of it. I mean maybe if you maybe cuz it's got this thing here and if you if you touch it it doesn't I, I don't know. I have no idea. It's certainly possible to fuck yourself up with this though, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I'm, why do I even have this? I'm less I'm less scared of, of hurting myself with this than hurting whatever I'm trying to to plane. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people use this, and I've even seen Dan Erlewine use mm -hmm. this, when there's a better tool. He's got to have something that works better than this. I'll just you take think. it over to the safety plane. <laughs> yeah, and, on a little chicken shit drill press and, yeah, and start Yeah, that's hogging. turning never fast enough to do this kind of work. It's not clean. No, it's and that's not the other smooth. thing that I've seen is, yeah. is this just does a terrible job. And wouldn't you be better off, you know, with something like this, even in a, a handheld router and some sort of jig? Some sort of sled. Yeah, that, Yeah, exactly. I would think so. You know? Yeah, I've seen people do like... Like full bodies with these, like thicknessing a, a body. I guess. So, I, I I guess. I don't but know. But whatever. What I, I want to know is like how fast can you spin this? And I don't I don't know the answer. And I don't care. It's it's guys don't if you got again, if you've got some of these JSE bits and one of these Wagner safety planer things and you love it, then rock and, on. And all your fingers. Rock on. <laughs> yeah, happy meal for you. Um it's not I, I I think I've I can count on one hand the number of times I've used this and 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 most of them were let's try it and see if we can make it work and it doesn't so anyway same with this guy here and and most of this stuff like this you know it's it's Which not one? that I'm this yeah it's not that I'm scared for my own personal safety yeah it's I'm scared for my project safety mm hmm because <laughs> there's nothing worse than a big giant chip of maple, running you got a, the. You got a really swanky piece of running bird's all eye the way. Maple. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Instantly. Instantly wrecked. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you hear it? <laughs> like, Damn it! Look at it, and yeah, it's got a son of a <laughs> eighth by eighth chunk out of the heel, all the way from one end to the other. Yeah, but I didn't want. <laughs> I didn't want that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually rounded up the pieces and tried I to remember. glue it back together. I remember. I think I actually saw that neck today. Yeah. Well, I, we got lucky because yeah, you we found ended the up using it. Yeah. Well, and, and then it all went away because we used it on a body that mm -hmm. that had, uh, yeah, not a whole lot of neck heel. Yeah. And yeah. I was able to save it. But if it was, you know, if it was anything else, it would have ruined it. It yeah. would have been time to cut it in half. Well, speaking of uh, cut it in half, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up our deep dive into router bits today. Thanks for joining us. Um, we are uh, uh, we continue to make videos and we continue to work in the shop. I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to do that, but like I say, as long as we can, we will. And I've got a couple videos um, that are edited and ready to go out. This video that we're doing right now is going to count for today's. I hope that everyone's okay with that. Um, I think tomorrow I'm going to do, uh, I've got, I've got one that 
we're going to, because then Chris, you're taking tomorrow off, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, so we're not going to do any live videos tomorrow. But um, hope you guys are weathering the storm and um, your houses are probably immaculately clean by now, right? <laughs> so guys, um, let's see. If you uh, like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Um, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this through the quarantine times. And if you can't do Patreon, though, we totally understand. Just share these videos as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast. This is Chris at Texas Toast. Oh, this is Chris at Texas Toast. We should do that. Uh, okay, you, you, I'll, I'll do the voice and you do the... And you actually just mouth the words. Okay. This is Chris. At oh, Texas. okay. All right, do it again. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna grow a beard and have a really cool car. And um. Yeah, I'm gonna change the oil on my cool car tomorrow. But um. Yeah, I make guitars too. Just <laughs> that's so dumb. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to come out like that. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I make <laughs> guitars too. I didn't know what to say because I'm like, because my thing is, if this is mad at Texas, if you're so smart, build it yourself. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> yours what yours you, shouldn't be, I make guitars. So what too. do you do around here? Just like, like anything? Somebody yeah. actually asked you that, didn't they? Yeah. What a turd. Mm. Oh, you guys know that Chris does everything cool that happens in the shop is because Chris does the that stuff. So. <laughs> I just make a big mess. Actually, I clean the shop today. The, the the shop looks wonderful. Thank you. Yep. Okay, guys. This is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. You got to know when to hold them. <laughs> <laughs>